Located near the summit of his luxurious star yacht, The First Light, the capo of the Crimson Dawn Crime Syndicate, Dryden Voss, kept a personal collection of rare and valuable artifacts. As seen in Solo, A Star Wars Story, Voss's study and the rare collection was visually impressive, but for the fans of the lore behind the story, it was a treasure chest of spectacular references and connections to the former Legends material. We've discussed some of these in a previous video, including connections to Zim the Despot, the Mandalorians, and the Ancient Sith. But after the recent release of the reference book Scum and Villainy, Case Files on the Galaxy's Most Notorious, the artifacts within Voss's study have been further expanded upon from the earlier mentions in the Solo Official Guide, providing even more Legends references and connections. As a brief reminder, Dryden Voss's study on the First Light contained displays of rare antiquities that together represented a one-of-a-kind collection. Well-paid buyers and relic hunters risked their lives to provide Voss with new trophies he could show off. Six different themed galleries were on display in Solo. Ancient mystic relics, idols of power and leadership, ancient weaponry, early stellar cartography, pre-spacefaring tribal artifacts, and ancient technology. Scum and Villainy expands on one of the most visible artifacts from the film, the near-complete set of Old Republic-era Mandalorian armor. We get further confirmation that the armor is Mandalorian Rallymaster armor, thereby forming a connection with the Rallymaster rank of the Mandalorian Neo-Crusaders from Legends. But more than that, we now know that these Rallymasters within canon served as battlefield commanders during the ancient wars of Mandalorian expansion, helping to forge their current borders. This is an awesome connection to the Neo-Crusader movement and the Mandalorian Wars from Legends, wherein the Mandalorians, disappointed with their territorial gains from the Great Sith War, would attempt to gain new territory from the Republic in the Mandalorian Wars. Fans of this era and legend should be excited, as we could see a similar story emerge, and it'll be interesting to see if these Rally Masters are in any way connected to the Mandalorian Jedi War which has already been established as canon. But Scum and Villainy doesn't just end there with the Mandalorians, and fans of KOTOR and Mandalorian lore and history are probably going to love this one just as much as I did. Unlike in the Solo Official Guide, we were provided with information about the weapons flanking both sides of the Mandalorian armor. These were ancient Mandalorian weapons, with one being a lance belonging to the Rally Masters and the other a halberd. More important is where these weapons originate from, before they were stolen to join Voss's collection. One of them originated within a monument on Cronist. Fans of Rebels will remember Cronist as the planet seen within the Mandalore sector that served as the ancestral home of Clan Wren, the clan of Sabine Wren. But the other weapon hails from the archaic arsenal on the planet of Ordo. In Legends, Ordo was the homeworld of Clan Ordo, which included Candorous Ordo in the era of the Mandalorian Wars. It's my understanding that this is the first time that the planet Ordo has been mentioned within canon, and it's a great reference to a famous clan and character. We unfortunately don't get any more information about the crystal masthead of Zim the Despot or the character itself, but we may have something that relates to Zim tangentially. Scum and Villainy notes, for the first time, a sacred vase within Voss's collection. But more important than the artifact itself was that it was stolen from an antiquities institute within the Teon Hegemony. This isn't the first time the Teon Hegemony has been mentioned within canon, but it's further evidence that we could be building towards a story that tells Zim's adventures in the Teon region of the galaxy, approximating one of my favorite pieces of lore from Legends. The Teon Hegemony literally had a history as long as the Old Republic itself in Legends, and it would be so great to see it built up again in canon, particularly if we have Zim re-enter again through this way as well. Very briefly, Scum and Villainy touches upon an armillary sphere detailing the ancient core worlds and navigational routes utilized in the early era of the Old Republic. Although this one was stolen from a gallery on Duro, and a similar sphere was mentioned in the Solo Official Guide as being Alderanian, it does appear to be the same artifact. Regardless, its importance is noted as being a representation of the ancient alignment of the planets Duro, Alderaan, and Corellia, which within canon was considered by galactic scholars to be the cradle of civilization within the galaxy. This could be a connection to the concept of a core founder within Legends, where these three planets were instrumental to the early formation of the Galactic Republic. 
In this way then, like the potential with the Tian hegemony, the early formation of the Republic in canon could evolve similarly to the way that it did within Legends. And finally, probably my favorite reveal within Scum and Villainy regarding the artifacts in Voss's collection is a new one, an ancient navigational data plaque. However, while we already knew that the collection contained ancient navigational relics, this one in particular was from an ancient Jedi survey vessel called the Permondiri Explorer. First, the name of the vessel itself is an excellent reference to Legends, as the Permondiri Explorer was the name of a lost survey vessel in the 1979 novel Han Solo's Revenge. But there's also some interesting lore here regarding the ancient Jedi within canon. Scum and Villainy notes that the data plaque belonging to this ancient Jedi vessel was adorned not just with traditional symbols denoting the light side of the Force, but also the dark and the balance between the light and dark as well. This is yet another example within the current canon that connects the ancient Jedi Order with the concept of balance, where the Order seen within the era of the films had evolved into something completely different. For these reasons, Voss's study has been a real treat for fans of Star Wars lore and the former Legends material. Given that there are many more artifacts that are part of the collection that aren't present in the film being rotated on and off the first light, there are so many more possibilities that can be explored, with more Legends connections and references being revealed in the future. Thank you for watching everyone, and as always, may the Force be with you.